What's up guys, Shane Starnes here. I just got back from CES and I saw tons of awesome new tech and gadgets. These are a few of my favorites. Let's go ahead and get started. I just wrapped up some time over at the XGME booth. You guys probably know XGME for their pro level projectors. And we're definitely gonna talk about a beast of a new projector that they have here at the show. But the biggest surprise actually came from something that you wear. They're showcasing their new Memo Mind platform. Memo Mind understands that glasses are deeply personal so they weren't just shipping a piece of tech, they're shipping fashion. They're offering over 100 different customization options with varying frame shapes, interchangeable temples, and different color options. Whether you need prescription lenses or sunglasses, they built these to be desirable frames first. They just happen to utilize powerful AI. I spent most of my time here looking at the flagship model, the Memo One. It's packing two integrated displays and speakers on both sides of the frame but the magic is actually in the software. The Memo Mind utilizes a multi-LLM hybrid operating system, which currently supports OpenAI, Azure, and Quinn, and the system's smart enough to automatically choose the AI that will answer your specific query the best. The display kind of floats just above your natural field of view. It's large enough to see clearly, but stays out of your way. A simple click on the bottom of the right side temple switches you between modes, such as navigation, live translation, a teleprompter, and media controls, there's also a really cool conversation mode that actively listens to your conversation and gives you tips on subjects that you may not be super familiar with. That way, the conversation keeps flowing. It's kind of like having a cheat sheet for real life. You've got a dashboard for your time, weather, and calendar. Notifications pop right into your field of view so that you can respond instantly. One thing that I didn't mind here is that there's no camera. These are designed for a more minimal private experience. Battery-wise, the glasses last a full day, and the charging case provides an extra seven full charges. Pre-orders start in March for $5.99, and they'll be shipping sometime in May. Now, if you want something even lighter, they also showed off the Memo Air display, skipping the speakers and using just one display, but it only weighs right at 28.9 grams. It actually felt lighter than my pair of Oakley sunglasses. These are coming at a later date, but the form factor is just incredible. Memo Air is an even lighter option for everyday wear, closer to regular glasses. Of course, it wouldn't be XGME without a serious home theater upgrade. This is the Titan Warm. This thing is a powerhouse. It utilizes a new dynamic iris system. Basically, the iris closes during dark scenes to crush those black levels and opens up during bright scenes, achieving a native contrast ratio of 10,000 to 1. They're also using lossless optical precision, meaning they use optical adjustments rather than digital ones to retain brightness, and they've also reworked the DMD architecture to handle much higher light power densities. While they didn't give me a final ANSI lumen rating, the original Titan hit 5,000 lumens, and if this exceeds that, combined with the new contrast performance, the Noir is going to rival projectors that cost significantly more. And whether you're looking for the next generation of smart eyewear or a serious upgrade to your home theater, XGME brought the heat this year at CES. Let me know in the comments, would you wear smart glasses that don't have a camera if they're smaller form factor and lightweight, or is having a camera on your smart glasses a must? Next up, I definitely have to talk about Ray Neo because if you've been watching footage from the CES show floor, you probably noticed the massive lines at their booth. People were waiting a long time just to get hands on with these glasses. Luckily, Ray Neo sponsored this segment and set me up with an appointment, so I was able to skip the line and jump straight into the demo. And the moment I put the glasses on, it immediately made sense why the demand here has been so intense. I started with a look at the Ray Neo X3 Pro. These are their standalone AI plus AR glasses, and the display technology is super impressive. You're getting dual full-color displays inside a frame that weighs just 76 grams, which is insanely light for what these are capable of, but the real standout for me was the interface. Radio's running a full-color AI operating system that's extremely thoughtful about how it uses screen space. Instead of blocking your field of view, the interface lives mostly on the bottom of your line of sight, it stays out of the way until you actually need it, which makes the whole experience feel far more natural than most AR headsets that I've tried. I didn't want to hog the demo station, but with an estimated three to five hours of battery life and that unobtrusive design, these are absolutely something that I'd love to spend more time with soon. Where I spent most of my time at the booth though, 
was with the big announcement, the Ray Neo Air 4 Pro. These are the world's first AR glasses with an HDR10 display, and that matters more than you might think. If you've used AR glasses before, you know that color accuracy and contrast can often be just okay, and that's not the case here. The image quality is easily best in class. You're looking at a simulated 200 inch screen and thanks to that HDR10 certification, highlights are brighter, blacks are deeper and colors have real punch. It genuinely feels like a portable home theater floating in front of your face. And speaking of home theater, audio is a massive upgrade this year. Ray Neo partnered with Bang Olufsen to tune the speakers and it shows immediately. The sound creates an immersive bubble around you whether you're watching a movie or playing a game. The separation, clarity, and spatial fill are all top tier. On top of that, brightness has been cranked up to 1200 nits with 10 levels of adjustment, which makes a huge difference in real world use. Even with ambient light around you, the image stays punchy and doesn't get washed out. Ray Neo is clearly going all in on portable cinema, and after spending time with the Air 4 Pro, it really feels like they're setting the bar high right now. I'll drop a link in the description if you want to check out the full specs, but if you've been looking for a legit portable monitor replacement, this is easily one of the best options at CES. Most of us know Dreamy as a high-end robotic vacuum company, but over the past few years, they've been quietly branching out, and this year they made a huge shift that took me by surprise. We aren't just looking at appliances anymore, Dreamy showed up to Vegas as a full-blown consumer tech giant. They showcased a massive interconnected smart ecosystem that was totally unexpected and frankly very exciting. Of course, I had to start where it all began with the vacuums. And this is where I got my first look at the all new X60 Max Ultra Complete. This thing is an engineering marvel. It's the thinnest robot vacuum Dreamy has ever released, coming in at just 3.13 inches tall. It finally solves the problem of getting under low profile modern furniture. It's powered by the new OmniSight AI, which can detect and avoid over 280 different types of objects. But the real magic is the proactive light system. It actually identifies different types of stains, including liquids, and adjusts the cleaning strategy instantly. For carpets, it introduces Carpet Force, which uses a retractable pressure plate to physically increase suction sill and power. But the biggest crowd pleaser definitely had to be the Cyber X. This is a concept that can literally climb stairs, no more carrying robots between floors or buying one for each level. They also showed the Cyber 10 Ultra, which features an actual robotic arm, it doesn't just clean, it can pick up and organize objects you left on the floor. It's like having a butler and a maid in one robot. On the handheld side, they had a crazy demo for the Z30 cordless vacuum. They used a suction to hold up about 45 pounds of weight. It was wild to see that kind of raw power in a stick vacuum. And their new wet dry vacuum was impressive too, transitioning easily from scrubbing hard floors to cleaning carpets without skipping a beat. Then we stepped outside, figuratively speaking. Dreamy's going hard on outdoor robotics. They have new pool cleaning bots, but the standout was the robotic mower A3AWD Pro. If you hate burying boundary wires, this is definitely for you. It requires zero wires and doesn't even need an RTK station. It uses OmniSense 3.0, combining 360 degree 3D LiDAR with binocular AI vision. It features edge master precision cutting and can detect over 300 objects. It's basically like an outdoor X60 Ultra Max for your grass. But here's where the ecosystem part really kicks in. They showed off the world's first air purifier with 360 degree active self cleaning. This uses a rolling brush to collect hair from the filter automatically so airflow never gets restricted. And finally, some serious innovation in beauty tech the Dreamy Pilot A1 hair dryer. This thing looks like sci-fi. It's got dual robotic arms that scan your scalp health and automatically adjust temperature and airflow to ensure you get a perfect dry with zero heat damage. The most exciting part was probably the unveiling of the Dreamy Nebula 1. This is a super powerful sports car that may be coming in the future. From the living room to the lawn and even your garage, Dreamy proved at CES 2026 that they are ready to run your entire smart home. If you're building a smart home this year, you need to keep your eyes on this ecosystem.
If there's one thing CES teaches you, it's that audio is just as important as video. The show floor is loud, it's chaotic, and capturing clean voiceovers here is usually a nightmare. That's why I had to stop by the small rig booth to check out their new S70 wireless microphone system. On paper, the specs are exactly what we need for pro work. It shoots in 48 kilohertz, 24-bit audio with an omnidirectional pickup. That means you get high-resolution sound with a massive dynamic range that captures your voice perfectly from any angle. But they went a step further than just raw specs. Small Rig actually partnered with Grammy-winning sound engineer Luca Bignardi to tune this system. It comes with nine Pro EQ presets built in, so you can get that rich studio finish sound right in the camera without needing to fix it in post. My favorite feature, though, is definitely the form factor. The transmitter is incredibly small, about the size of a lapel mic. You can clip the bulk of the unit on the inside of your shirt so it's almost invisible. It's a much cleaner look than the big black plastic boxes that we're used to seeing. Functionality wise, it's built for speed. You have five gain options on actual hard switches, so no digging through touch menus when you're in a rush. And for noise in crowded places like this CES showroom floor, it has three different noise canceling modes that isolate your voice surprisingly well, even in a crowd like this. I did want to do a sound comparison. I'm wearing the small rig S70 right now, and this is what it sounds like. Now I'm just using the microphone directly from my Canon EOS R. The kit comes with everything, including two transmitters, the receiver, phone adapters, and a charging case. You get eight hours of battery life on the mics themselves and a total of 40 hours with the case, so it can easily last the entire show. If you want pro audio that stays out of sight, this is definitely one to consider. Next up, I partnered with Speedians to check out their latest fitness tech, and they showed me something that goes way beyond a standard smartwatch. This is the new Speedians strap. The big idea here is that it's not just tracking what you already did, it's actively telling you what you should do next. Most fitness trackers stop at stats, steps, heart rate, calories burn. The strap takes that data and actually uses built-in AI to guide your training. It looks at your goals, your performance trends, and your recovery data, and then helps form your workout routines automatically. It's designed to be the brain of the entire Speedience ecosystem, tying together their machines like the Monster 2, the Volonix bike, and even their newest compact gym setups. The killer feature here is velocity-based training, and this is something serious lifters will immediately appreciate. Instead of guessing your strength based on reps alone, it tracks the speed of your movement to calculate your true one rep max in real time. That means you're training at the optimal load every session. You push hard, but not past your safe limits. It's basically like having a personal trainer on your wrist, making sure every rep counts. It even goes beyond lifting. The strap has sensors that can detect hydration status and remind you to drink water before fatigue hits. It's fully waterproof, built to be worn 24 seven, and the battery lasts a solid 14 days. There are two versions. The basic model comes in stainless steel, but I personally like the Pro version a lot more. It's made of titanium, so it's lighter on the wrist, and it adds ECG functionality, and it comes with some really clean color options like green, oat, and silver. It actually feels like a premium fitness device, not just another plastic tracker. Now, my absolute favorite thing at the Speedience booth had to be their brand new Gym Nano. Think of it as the Gym Monster 2, but shrunk down into a massively portable form factor. The concept's absolutely genius, you can attach it to gym racks you already own at home, or you can pack it up and take it to a commercial gym to instantly add smart resistance to a standard rack. Now, don't let the size fool you. This thing delivers up to 220 pounds of max resistance, adjustable in precise one pound increments. Because it uses magnetic resistance instead of traditional plates, it feels incredibly smooth. No momentum cheating, no clanging weights, just consistent resistance through the entire movement. The touchscreen interface makes it incredibly easy to switch between five dynamic weight modes, standard, eccentric, chain, fixed speed, and sled. I was moving it up and down the rack at the booth for different exercises, and it was effortless. In seconds, a normal power rack turns into a fully smart training center. Between the strap managing your data and recovery, and the Nano bringing intelligent resistance to basically any rack, Speedience is really filling out their ecosystem this year in a big way. If you're tight on space but still want serious resistance and smart training, 
the Gym Nano is an absolute no-brainer. I've linked both the Speedia strap and the Gym Nano down in the description so you can check out the full specs. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for my day one of coverage. Thanks for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.